everyone. Are you ready to learn English in the library? Let's get started. Today, I want to talk to you about the English novelist Samuel Richardson and his bestseller, Pamela or Virtue Rewarded. Richardson was born in 1689 and died in 1761. He published his first novel when he was 51 years old. As a young man, he wrote love letters for other young people in his town. This experience probably helped him later write epistolary novels. An epistolary novel is a novel made up of letters. Richardson became a printer and set up his own print shop in London. He was a successful printer and published the works of well-known novelists such as Daniel Defoe and Sarah Fielding. He also printed newspapers and pamphlets. Richardson worked in his print shop until his death. Richardson wrote a collection of letters offering tips on how to behave correctly. These letters served as a basis for his first novel, Pamela or Virtue Rewarded, published in 1740. Pamela is an epistolary novel made up of letters written by Pamela to her parents in which she describes her daily life and the violence that she faces and occasionally letters from Pamela's father who advises Pamela on how to remain virtuous, that is to say, how to remain a virgin. Pamela is an adolescent girl employed as a wealthy lady's maidservant. In the first letter, we learn that this lady has died. Her adult son, Mr. B, assures Pamela that he will find her a new situation. We later learn that Mr. B is a rake, meaning he is a libertine. Pamela is very beautiful and Mr. B becomes infatuated with her. He tries to rape her on several occasions. He then kidnaps her and prevents her from returning to her parents' home. After a failed attempt at escaping from the house in which Mr. B has imprisoned Pamela, she considers committing suicide. After multiple attempts at raping Pamela, Mr. B eventually allows her to return to her parents. During the trip to her parents' home, Pamela stops at an inn where she learns that Mr. B is ill and suffers as a result of her departure. She becomes worried about his health and decides to return to Mr. B. At this moment, she discovers that she is in love with Mr. B. Thanks to Pamela, Mr. B learns to act generously and piously. 
he and Pamela get married. His sister, Lady Davers, learns of this marriage and comes to his house when he is gone. Lady Davers is extremely cruel to Pamela and refuses to acknowledge her as her sister-in-law. However, Lady Davers eventually recognizes Pamela's virtue and welcomes her into the family. Pamela adopts Mr. B's daughter, who was born out of wedlock. Mr. B offers Pamela's poor parents an estate to live on and profit from. In the end, everyone lives happily ever after. Pamela is an example to aristocrats. Instead of wanting material things, Pamela is happy to use her newfound wealth and status to help the poor and perform charitable acts. As the subtitle of the novel indicates, Pamela's virtue is rewarded through her upward social mobility. Pamela was an immediate bestseller after its publication, whereas most 18th century novels, such as Daniel Defoe's 1722 novel, The Fortunes and Misfortunes of the Famous Small Flanders, feature immoral characters who succeed in getting what they want. Richardson uses the novel genre to teach Christian morals. Today, the novel appears outdated and controversial because Mr. B is never punished for attempting to rape Pamela and because it is hard to believe that Pamela would suddenly be in love with a man who was so cruel and violent toward her. Let's look at the first paragraph of the novel. Dear father and mother, I have great trouble and some comfort to acquaint you with. The trouble is that my good lady died of the illness I mentioned to you and left us all much grieved for her loss. For she was a dear good lady and kind to all us her servants. Much I feared that as I was taken by her goodness to wait upon her person, I should be quite destitute again and forced to return to you and my poor mother who have so much to do to maintain yourselves. And as my lady's goodness had put me to write and cast accounts and made me a little expert at my needle and other qualifications above my degree, it would have been no easy matter to find a place that your poor Pamela was fit for. But God, whose graciousness to us we have so often experienced at a pinch, put it into my good lady's heart on her deathbed just an hour before she expired to recommend to my young master all her servants one by one. And when it came to my turn to be recommended, for I was sobbing and crying at her pillow, she could only say, my dear son, and so broke off a little. And then recovering, remember my poor Pamela, and these were some of her last words. In this paragraph, we learn that Pamela has received an education like that of most aristocratic 
young women thanks to the lady she worked for. Pamela is thankful for her lady's kindness toward her and mourns her death. Now that her lady is dead, Pamela may need to return to physical labor, such as the work that her parents perform. However, Pamela is confident that her lady's son will find her a new position in which she can use her skills. This paragraph also reveals Pamela's faith that God will protect her. You'll notice that the first letter of certain words is capitalized. In the 18th century, writers capitalized the first letter of nouns that they considered to be important. Do you know any other 18th century English novels? Do you know any other novels that seek to impart moral instruction? Tell me in the comments. Also, you can find all of the vocabulary for this video below in the comments. Click on the link and see the vocabulary. See you next time for more English in the library.